Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Friday Bible study. We're in the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and we're believing God for exceptional understanding as we study His words. Pray my response to James Langs. We welcome you to our Friday Bible study. Uh, for those of us who are in Europe, our time clock will go back Sunday morning at 3 o'clock. For those of you who are in the U.S. and other parts of the world who do set your clocks uh, ahead or back, who do follow daylight savings times, it will happen next weekend. It will be the morning of the 3rd. Uh, so please, if you forget to set your clocks back, for those of you who need to set your clocks back, you will be in church an hour early. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But uh, in all seriousness, just set your clocks back an hour before you go to bed, and uh, we will uh, uh, all meet on the same same time. Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. We're, we're praying for situations that are happening in the world. It seems like uh, the longer man lives, the crazier that he gets, and and, and more foolish foolishness that he that he does. But thank thank God for the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's some dark days that are coming uh, on this world that are going to happen very, very soon. Thank God for His children that are praying, that are witnessing, that are holding back the judging hand of God for a period of time. But God Almighty is going to rapture His church out of here, and then the Antichrist will come in shortly after that, maybe within months or a year after that, He will be revealed, and the world will go through seven years of tribulation period. Afterward, uh, millennial reign, Praise the Lord, the devil is going to be loose for a season, and then the kingdom age will come in, the perfect age will follow shortly after that. So I look forward to, those, to the events that are foretold in the Word of God. You say, how do you know that? Well, like I said, the Word of God tells us that, and I believe the Bible is the Word of the Lord. And so tonight we're going to be in the book of, or uh, today, or whatever time it is that you will, you can join with us. Uh, we're in the book of Corinthians, as I said, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're going to be picking up in the 24th verse. Before we get into that verse of discussion, we're going to open in prayer. Believe God for great and mighty things to be done. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for Calvary. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, the peace and the joy in which you've sown in our soul. We come against every demon power of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that you will bless us. Bless us in a mighty way, Father, we endeavor to study your word. We are praying that the teacher of the Holy Spirit will show up and guide us through this word and help us, Father, that we will be lights and witnesses for the glory and the honor and the praise of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for keeping us safe and whole. And we give you praise and we give you honor forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And as always, I'll be reading the expository notes that are throughout the verses. Paul writes in the 24th verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, But unto them which are called, note, refers to those who accept the call, for the entirety of mankind is invited. And the call here in which they're talking about is the call of salvation, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and to be born again. This is not to be dunked in a tank that comes as an open profession of your faith, of an inward work. Baptism doesn't save you. Bap baptism doesn't change your life. I realize a Catholic, that's one of the seven sacraments uh, to be baptized, but baptism has no effect on your salvation. It is faith in what Christ has done for you at the cross. And again, that can be found in the prestigious word of God. Both Jews and Greeks, note, actually stands for both Jews and Gentiles. Any one other than a Jew is a Greek, excuse me, the Gentile. Christ, the power of God, note what he did at the cross, atoned for our sin, thereby making it possible for the Holy Spirit to exhibit his power within our lives. Praise the Lord. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, and remember, Calvary was a legal work. Satan, because of sin that was only covered, not taken away, had a legal claim against mankind. That's why the souls that were in paradise could not go to glory. Paradise, as I've covered uh, many times, was located in the upper regions of hell. That was a great gulf that separated hell, the burning side, from, from paradise. And those souls were literally held captive in paradise, could not go to glory, as I said, because their sins were only covered. 
However, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he said, it is finished. Mm. That meant that the legal claim that the devil had, it had been paid in full. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the wisdom of God. Note, this wisdom devised a plan of salvation which pardoned guilty men and at the same time vindicated and glorified the justice of God, which stands out as, a, as the wisest and most remarkable plan of all time. Praise the Lord. The plan is what was predestinated. Not who would be saved and who would go to hell. God, God's plan that his son Jesus Christ would come and be a, a propitiation, a, a sacrifice, a ransom, uh, as payment for the sins of the world. That was, was, was already predetermined, predestined to occur. Praise the Lord. It, it is, it is, the, the notes here say remarkable plan of all time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. Amen. It's, it's amazing what the Lord has done for us. Amazing. Calvary was, Calvary was something else. Praise the Lord. It was something else. Verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Note, God achieves the mightiest ends by the humble, humblest means. You know, it's, it still amazes me how God can take a life that's all messed up, whacked up, and straighten it out so that that person or persons uh, will, will preach his word. And I'm not necessar necessarily talking about under the fivefold five -fold ministerial calling of apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. I'm talking about just speaking because preaching is just that telling. You know, to raise them up to be a witness. Somebody whose life was bound by drugs or bound by alcohol or bound by immorality. And, and God saved them and set them free. And, and now they are preachers. They are messengers. They are telling the old story that Jesus Christ is able to change your heart and change your life. That, that just, that amazes me. I'm, I'm simply, completely, utterly amazed. Hallelujah. Amen. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Note, refers to that which men take to be weak, but actually it's not the cross. Look at the cross as being a place of defeat, but that was a place of victory. Praise the Lord place of victory. I remember this was uh, when I was a, a, a youngster. I mean, I was really, really young. And my uh, great-grandfather had, had, had died. And I remember going to his funeral. I, I mean, I, I must have been, uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing, three, four years of age. Uh, I have a, I have a, a snapshot of, of being at his funeral. And, and I remember that it was not a, as far as I can remember, you know, I mean, maybe I may have the event, events out of order <clears throat> because I know my grandmother, of course, was sad for losing her her husband. My great grandmother was mad, was sad because of losing her husband. But I, I remember there was there was an attitude at the at the funeral of 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 of, of, of gaiety, an attitude of of of, of joy. An attitude of of of, uh, of 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 peace, of being at at his funeral. It wasn't a ho hum, oh whoa, oh I'm so down, I'm so distraught, I don't know what to do. It was more of a celebration than anything else. And even at that young age, that 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 that, that picture has, that memory has stayed with me of of my being in my great grandfather's uh, funeral. That it was a celebration. Hallelujah. He's gone to be with the Lord. We won't see him anymore on this side of the grave. But on the other side of the grave. Glory to God. See that's why the devil fights so hard. That's why the devil hits us with so much. And, and that's why we feel like, like we are, we're all torn down. And we're, we're nothing but rubbish at times. Because... The devil doesn't want us to be witnesses and mouthpieces for the Lord. He wants to use our failures in order to hold us down. I'm talking to some of you. The devil wants to use our failures to hold us down and convince us that we're of no use, 
There's no way we can be a mouthpiece for God. We've blown it. We've messed up. God has given us chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity, and we've still blown it. But I'm here to tell you this, that God is getting you ready for something great and something wonderful. Uh, the, the brother Professor Stanley E. Richards said, if you ever get knocked down, don't wallow, but get back up. Some of you are wallowing in your misery. Oh, Lord, I've done it. Oh, Lord, I've blown it. Get back up. Let God dust you off, spiritually speaking, and get you back on the road of hallelujah one more time. He's not finished with you yet. God still has something that he wants to do in you and through you that will be a blessing to somebody else and let them know that if I made it, after all that I've done, <laughs> hey, your miracle is coming also. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. Verse 26. For you see your calling brethren. Note, refers to the nature and the method of the heavenly calling. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Note, are called and accept. Because many times what we want and what we think and us and our attitude and our pride and our prejudices get in the way. We think we don't need it. Of course, that low down, dirty, whomever over there, they need it. The drunk that's in the alley, he needs it. Uh, you know, the prostitute on the corner, she needs it. But you know me, I'm an upstanding, upright citizen. You know, I, 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 I treat everybody right. I, I, I go to church sometimes. But, you know, I don't need it. Oh, yeah, you do need it. We need the cross. We need the cross. And we've got to come by the way of the cross. Praise the Lord. Verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Note, the preaching of the cross confounds the wise because it falls out to change lives which nothing man has can Nothing man has can change your life. Nothing man has can set you free. I applaud the efforts that are done by Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and, you know, the other groups, uh, self-help groups that are out there. But it, the result is not change lives. It is a 12-step program that you go through. And at the end, you still must admit that you are still bound by that addiction. And you will always be bound by that addiction. But the Bible tells us that he that the Son has made free is free indeed. Meaning that once Jesus sets you free, you no longer are what you used to be. And aren't you glad that you're no longer that but you are a blood-bought, blood-washed child of God. Years ago, Miss Barbara Walters did an interview with uh, several folks from different organizations. One of them was from Planned Parenthood. Uh, another one was from um, a Teen Challenge. Uh, another one was from a, another group that I don't remember. And they, they, were, they were going back and forth, and she was asking them different questions, and, and they were answering. And um, they asked, one of the questions Miss Walters asked the group, was what is your success rate as far as those that are bound by alcohol or by, by drugs? And, and uh, uh, I, I said Planned Parenthood. I'm, I'm sorry. It wasn't Planned Parenthood. It was uh, um, uh, AA. Yeah, AA. What am I, what am I talking about? Oh, praise the Lord. I still had Planned Parenthood on my mind for some reason there. Oh, well, we were talking about it earlier before we started taping. That's, that's why Planned Parenthood popped up. But don't get me wrong. I, I'm not an advocate of Planned Parenthood. I, I think they need to disband that stuff, get rid of it. The government needs to shut down money that's going to it. They need a clean house with Planned Parenthood. I am pro-life. I believe that at the moment of conception, it is a baby. It ain't no fetus. It ain't no blob. It is a baby that's in that womb. Praise the Lord. But anyway, she was asking them, she said, what are your, your uh, success rate? And the one from, uh, from AA, they said that it was something like, you know, 
at least the low 20s or the high teens and other group you know said numbers along the same way and she she got around to teen challenge and and, and uh, the young lady that was that was representing teen challenge said 85 percent she said what yeah 85 percent he said no she said, yeah we've got we've got statistics to prove it we've got the documentation to prove that everyone who goes through uh, our 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 uh, uh, program which is biblically oriented meaning that we take them in those that are bound by by alcohol bound by drugs and we we have someone several people that stay in the room with them pray with them and take authority over those spirits of alcohol those spirits of drugs and we stay with them and we read the word to them and, and they hear the word constantly and they are surrounded by brothers and sisters that love the Lord and those that go through and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and are baptized in the Holy Spirit 85% of them are successful meaning that they are no longer bound they are no longer an alcoholic they are no longer a drug addict but they are set free by the power of Almighty God as Walters and others kind of snubbed her and never came back to this young lady again throughout the entirety of the program. It would seem that anybody who, 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 who had a success rate of 85%, you'd want to hear everything they got to say. But when it began and ended with Jesus Christ, they wanted nothing to do with it. How foolish. How foolish we are. It goes on to say, And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> No, the cross is looked at as weakness, but it brings about great strength and power regarding those who accept the finished work of Christ and what Christ has done for us at the cross. Praise the Lord. Verse 28, and base things of the world and things which are despised as God chosen. No, it is God working in the base things and the despised things which brings about miraculous things. Praise the Lord. Talk about going to church. Talk about going to the altar. Giving your heart and life to Jesus Christ? <laughs> the ridiculousness of this. The ludicrousity. The, 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 the foolishness of, of this. Oh, but billions have come by the way of the cross. The, the message of the cross. Uh, Jesus Christ saved. Jesus Christ heals. Jesus Christ delivers. Jesus Christ baptized the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is coming back. Has set multiplied multiplicities of multitudinous free from the bondages and the ravages of life and giving them joy down in their soul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. No, God can use that which is nothing within itself, but with him all things become possible. God uses events in order to bring us to the brink of the horse trough where we can either drink or spit it out. Praise the Lord for, for those of us who stuck our face in the water and said, give me of this living water that I may never thirst again. Praise the Lord. My wife often gets home and she said, honey, she said, uh, you're in Bible study. You're not supposed to be preaching. You're supposed to be teaching. And I re I, my, re my reply to her is, uh, honey, I'm a preacher. So that preaching comes out even in Bible study at times. Verse 29, that no flesh, human effort, should glory in his Present. Nothing that we have done, we can we can hold up and say, "Look, O oh Lord, look what I have done." We cannot glory in His presence. It is only in Christ. Praise the Lord. Verse thirty. But of Him are you in Christ Jesus. Note pertains to this great plan of God, which is far beyond all wisdom of the world. We are in Christ Jesus by virtue of the cross. Would He be it there? We have access because of what Christ has done for us at the cross. Salvation comes to the cross. Healing comes to the cross. Deliverance comes to the cross. The baptism in the Holy Spirit comes to the cross. Every need that we have comes by the way of the cross. Sanctification comes to the cross. Justification comes to the cross. And glorification, when that happens, will come because of the cross cross praise the Lord and what Jesus there at did continue on verse 30 who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification 
and redemption. Note, we have all of this by the Holy Spirit through Christ and what he did at the cross. This means the cross must ever be the object of our faith. Not that wooden beam. That wooden beam has no power in it whatsoever. But it is the event. I heard my pastor's son, uh, Donnie, say it like this. When, when, when you say Pearl Harbor, people don't think about a body of water, but they remember what happened December the 7th, 1941. When you say 9-11, instantly, you don't think about a, a particular uh, historical day, but you think, you remember the events that happened on September the 9th, uh, 2001. Excuse me, sorry, sorry, sorry. September the 11th, that's the ninth month, sorry, that's the ninth month. September the 11th, 2001. Praise the Lord. That's what you remember. So when we say the cross, we're not talking about that uh, patibulum and the, 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 uh, patibulum and the, uh, what was the crossbar? The crossbar was patibulum and the, praise the Lord. I can't remember. There's two parts to the cross. One of them, Jesus carried up the hill and other was already in the ground uh, already laid out Tibulum and uh, ah, praise the Lord amen 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 can't remember right now probably remember it about 12 o'clock tonight it probably hit me exactly what it was verse 31 that according as, as it is written in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 he who glories let him glory in the Lord note he who boasts let him boast in the Lord not in particular preachers Boast in what God has done, not because my pastor's name is Apostle, Bishop, Elder, so uh, and so, and so forth, but because of what Jesus Christ has done at the cross. I remember watching something one time, and uh, I didn't know it was going to happen, uh, but when I saw it, I thought how sad, because it showed how much emphasis is put upon a man rather than upon the man. Uh, Christ Christ Jesus um, there was a particular minister that's well known around the world I won't mention uh, his name and and, and 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 at the end of the service um, a, a friend of mine had given me uh, a tape to watch and of course I, I did in respect out of respect to him uh, and at the end of the service uh, there was a young man that was called forth and uh, and uh, as he came up, uh, the, the pastor of this, this large church uh, came forth and he talked briefly about the young man, how he had known him and known his, his family and uh, how he was going to pray for him. And I thought to myself, because there was a holy hush that came upon the crowd like, oh, the pastor is going to pray for this man. Oh, how special. Pastor is so anointed, he's going to actually lay his hands on this young man and pray for him. And you know, folks, God can work through a little kid. You know, it, it's not, it's not, you know, your accomplishment. God is looking at it. He's just looking at faith. And the pastor laid hands on this young man. This young man fell down and, you know, I can't say the power of God did not knock this young man. I, I, I don't know, but with all of the hype that was going into what I was watching, uh, I felt it was more flesh than anything else. If the boy wouldn't have failed, they'd have probably had a ride in that church. The pastor that laid hands on him, he's still standing. <laughs> so, folks, I want you to know, it ain't that preacher, it ain't that pastor. Love them if they're godly and they're living for the Lord and preaching the cross. Uh, but you know if they if they've strayed on the left field and think that they got so much power in that hand of theirs then they've lost sight of where the true power comes from and that is from Jesus Christ we are simply vessels that's all we are flawed vessels that God has chosen to work through praise the Lord we pray that we've said something by the help and grace of God that's been a blessing to you as always if you have any questions or comments please send them to us at pom underscore ministry at yahoo.com 
Or go to the web address you see on the screen and select contact and send us an email. We would love to hear from you. If you're in a local area, you'd have a local church. Consider this to be an open invitation to worship and fellow fellowship with us on Sundays. Our service begin at 11 o'clock. Again, you can go to the web address you see on the screen. Uh, to the left column, you will see uh, some links. Uh, click POM Italy. It'll take you to our main uh, website. Once there, you will see a link for uh, directions uh, in which you can contact us. And we would love, again, love for you to be with us. If not a local area, you have a local church. We're praying that God will lead you to a place where that is preaching the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, where the cross of Jesus Christ is preached. Uh, where lives are changed by the power of God, where believers are filled with the Holy Spirit, where the church is percolating like a Miss Folgers coffee pot. Praise the Lord. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed weekend. Have a blessed upcoming weekend. Remember, of those of you in Europe, don't forget to set your clocks back. Otherwise, you're going to be at church an hour early. Hallelujah. We love you in Jesus Christ. Be blessed.